Good evening. We still have just the last few people signing in. We want to be respectful of your time, and it's about that time right now, but we're just going to give it one more minute. So if you are milling about, if you wouldn't mind finding your seat, we will get started shortly. Additionally, we do have this entire open table here, and I promise it won't be like sitting at the front of the class. I won't call on you. <laughs> I mean, just have my back to you, sorry. <laughs> Amy, would you please give me the sign as soon as we're done signing people in? Excellent. It's bugging me. How's it going? Do you go by Angel or I Angel. Angel. Okay. Excellent. We will go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. I want to express our sincere appreciation on behalf of the Community Development Department that you're giving up some of your very valuable evening time to help us with our community visioning process. I'm Mireya Turner, Director of Community Development. I want to also extend thanks to our brand new Bur uh, Big Valley Advisory Committee uh, for hosting us during their very first Municipal Advisory Committee meeting. So thank you very much. As you look around the room today, they're in Navy shirts. We have a number of AmeriCorps uh, staffers with us this evening. They have gotten a lot of experience in facilitating group tables over the last week and a half. And right now they're, they're standing uh, aside waiting for us, for me, to get my overview done and get you guys started. Uh, and then they will help with the facilitation of the small group session. I also want to thank members of our community development staff. If you are a member, please wave your, wave your hand. Got Mary and Janet in the back and our principal planner, Michelle, in the front. They will also be assisting. Sometimes some of the questions that come up during discussions are very planning related. And our AmeriCorps volunteers, while they are quite capable, are not experienced in planning. So our staff will be wandering around helping to assist with any of those questions. I want to thank Sam Houston for being here tonight to handle our uh, recording of the meeting. The internet connection uh, turned out to be unstable in this location. We were hoping it would last, so we won't have participants via Zoom. However, this, as well as all of our other community meetings, are recorded and will be posted on the PEG TV YouTube channel, as well as the lakecounty2050.org website. That website, lakecounty2050.org, is the house for the whole um, process of the general plan and local area plan updates. So I will only repeat that address about nine times tonight. I'll try to keep it low. Additionally, I want to thank Gilbert Rangel, who's been attending each of our meetings to provide on-site Spanish translation services if needed. Gilbert will definitely be an expert in planning by the time he's done. And Supervisor Paiska is uh, driving here from Sacramento, so she should be here shortly. Oh, and I have a duwaki. Okay, so I'll give you a brief overview of what a general plan is. I wonder if we should keep that window or that door open yeah. so we can get air through there. Would you mind? Thank you. Try not to sweat you all out before the evening. Uh, so I'll give you a brief overview about the general plan and the local area plan. What's in them? What's the purpose? Why are you here? Uh, we will then break into small groups. Advisory body discussions was appropriate for some where we did have um, municipal advisory councils that had some input, which we took at the end. So if appropriate, we'll do that this evening. And then we'll talk about next steps and other ways you can get involved.
All right. Overview of our project, the Lake County 2050 update. The county, as you can see on this map, is divided into eight different planning areas. Each of those planning areas has their very own local area plan, such as the Upper Lake Nice uh, plan or the Kelseyville area plan. We are updating all eight of these local area plans, which are community-focused com uh, visioning plans. Um, and the general plan will include a number of countywide elements. The long-range planning project that this is will also require environmental analysis according to state law. And that is, the, that is going to be a full EIR, uh, an environmental impact report, that will be prepared alongside with the updates. Also, not originally part of the Lake County 2050, but added in subsequently, is the Climate Adaptation Plan, which is going to consider a number of climate-related impacts on our county, and we'll start taking a look at ways we can deal with them and mitigate them and become resilient with them, or about them. And that is also following the same Lake County 2050 timeline. Where am I? I think I'm too forward. Oh my word. See, don't give me the clicker. I don't do it right. And let's keep going. We're missing a slide. Anyway, okay. The general plan is required by state law. It must be updated no less than every 20 years. It can be amended as needed as we go along, but that full-on update um, is every 20 years, and that's what we're looking at right now. The purpose of the general plan is to make sure that we're capturing the community's vision for what we want to see happen in development in our county and in our communities in the next 20 years. It also serves as a framework for a number of other regulations and guidelines. It also uh, informs the zoning code. After we complete this three-year project, we'll then launch an update of the, the zoning code because the two must coincide. They must be synchronized. It's important to have consistency with the local area plans because everybody needs understanding of what the community vision is and where we're going from there. Now, these plans are, are extremely valuable in community development because if you come for a use permit because you want the, some type of a business, uh, we're always looking to make sure that what is proposed is consistent with the community's vision for that area. Maybe that's the next slide. Hold on. Oh, no, I get it. I get it now. Okay. Components of our general plan. We have required topics, which is the list on the left, and optional elements that are on the right. So on the left, the stuff that's required by law is land use, open space, circulation, that includes transportation, um, the housing element, conservation of resources, safety element, noise element, and what's a, a, a new element that is now required, which is environmental justice, and we'll talk about that just a little bit in a moment. On the right-hand side, you'll see the optional elements. Every jurisdiction, county, city, um, has the opportunity to create their own standalone optional elements. And we do so for the reason that what we're talking about, that particular element, is something that the jurisdiction feels is so important, we really need to flesh it out further than where it may have been included as a small section in another element. And so in Lake County, that is, we have the Aggregate Resources Management Plan, which it regulates how we extract resources, like the, um, the gravel from the creeks or the quarries. Agricultural resources, because I don't, I don't need to explain that one. I mean, we are ag, so that one definitely needs a lot of detail. Geothermal resources for the geothermal resources that we have in the South County, public facilities and services, and water resources, which focuses on Clear Lake specifically. The aggregate resources management plan and the housing element are, are following a, a slightly modified timeline. Housing element is required um, to be updated in the state on, I think it's a seven-year cycle. And so that's going to need to be at the state for certification by 2027. 20, uh, 
instead of our finishing as uh, anticipated in 2026. The aggregate resources management plan requires a, a level of specialty and exp expertise in that industry um, that we're gonna have a separate uh, process to do so. Not that you won't have public input. All of these include public input. It's just that the, uh, the, the staff resources and the, the firm that we brought on board, we don't have the expertise that we need to really make the solid updates to the aggregate resource management plan. So we're looking for funding for that one right now. You know what, Sam? I recognize this is just lower. We're missing the title part. That's why it's throwing me off. Okay, that's awesome. Can everybody see that? Okay, good. So, local area plans. Historically, we have updated the general plan as one big project, and then we've kind of hit some, you know, local area plans as we could afford it in, in the county. And so, a number of them were extremely outdated. So we got to this point where now we're up against a deadline to update the general plan, but we can't do so with seriously outdated local area plans. And so we came up with this sort of shift in the way things are normally done. And the update that we're doing with all of them at the same time actually is going to invest more robust focus and input on the local area plans because we, intend, we, we need them to carry the exact same weight as the general plan going forward. Again, local area plans uh, are community oriented. It's a community vision. So whereas ag may talk about ag here and uh, you know, in Middletown, the Kelseyville area plan talks about issues that are specific to Kelseyville. It can also include up to four special, areas, uh, special study areas. In the North Shore, this looks like a number of commercial community centers that were developed during their last area plan that resulted in the special study areas for like the promenade, um, the strand, different places that, that the community envisioned as um, let's build commercial here because we want to create this as like a community center um, to help with the fact that, you know, people just drive right past, right through these communities. Uh, it could also be something that we were talking about at the Upper Lake Nice area plan meeting, which is Blue Lakes feels left out. It's an option then to create a special study area for this, the community of Blue Lakes so that they feel that their Blue Lake specific issues are included in the community visioning. And those um, special study areas can be determined later. All right, this is how it's broken up because we did it a little differently than as I just explained. The countywide elements, a lot of those are uh, requ re required by law, but look over on the right-hand side, the local area plans. We're gonna be talking about land use, um, transportation or circulation, open space conservation and recreation. We're housing the environmental justice element in the local, uh, local area plans, public facilities and services and economic development, as well as those special study areas. And another thing about the local area plan is that you can design your community design guidelines in your local area plan. So if there is a theme of the commercial storefronts that you wanna preserve, say the historic theme that is an Upper Lake Main Street, things like that, um, you can design guidelines that sort of help people that want to develop in, uh, on our main streets in, in Kelseyville to understand how we want their buildings to look, just so it matches with an overall theme. Land use map. This is, where usually, this is the part that usually gets the most attention, and that is because it illustrates where the community wants to see different types of development on different parcels. So it, uh, see, as you see the different sort of designations, the land use designations, that tells someone who's coming with a project where their project would fit best. It also identifies densities, so housing densities or um, lot coverage in case of commercial. So it helps us to sort of moderate the, the appearance of what we'd like to see. Is that glaring on you, huh? Sorry. Can you scooch, Angel, could you scooch that door just a little bit, please? We don't want to blind Mary. All right. Again, this map instructs the zoning map. 
but the zoning map then has additional details that enforce the community's vision, such as height restrictions, uh, setbacks, minimum parcel sizes for, uh, for subdivisions, things like that. Environmental justice, the new element. Environmental justice basically means it, its purpose is basically to ensure the basic right of everyone to live, work, go to school, play and worship in a clean and healthy environment. State law has recognized low-income communities, communities of color, and tribal communities have experienced a combination of factors with the result that today these communities struggle with both a disproportionate burden of pollution and health impacts, as well as a disproportionate social and economic disadvantages like poverty and housing instability. And so this environmental justice element um, is created then to improve conditions of those communities. Those communities are defined in state law as disadvantaged communities. We have a little more about this one too. So we are able as a jurisdiction to add what we consider in our environmental justice analysis, but the bullet pointed list on the top is the required ones. So reduce pollution exposure and improve air quality, promote public facilities. Public facilities could be something like street, street uh, sidewalks, street lighting, um, or larger facilities like flood control facilities. Access to food that's affordable and nutritionally adequate. This could either be through um, zoning for new grocery stores or offering healthier options within existing convenience stores. It could be expanding options for farmers markets um, or adding new community gardens, things like that. Those all impact access to healthy food. Safe and sanitary um, homes, that could refer to the, the regulations we've taken against lead-based paint or um, asbestos and mold, as well as pests and rodents. It could also involve overcrowding, which is when more people, when people are all stuffing into the same house to be able to afford rent or a mortgage payment. Physical activity, uh, promoting physical activity. So this is, uh, could, could look like ensuring that people have safe places to bike or trails to walk on, um, connecting residential areas to commercial areas, things like that, open spaces, connecting to creeks. So enabling people or giving people opportunities to choose something other than jumping in the car to go someplace. While we work on the environmental justice element, it's important also to keep in mind that we want to avoid things that can happen when we're improving neighborhoods, which is gentrification and displacement of the existing populace. So we stay aware of that as well. The intention of the Lake County 2050 project is to hear the voices of the people that are in these disadvantaged communities so that we can make sure that they're involved in our policy development instead of you know, we're us just making rules and being like, okay, there you go. That's the best thing for you. All right, how do general plan and local area plans affect you? The general plan and local area plans actually affect you in ways that, that touch our lives every day. They could, uh, it could be something like, hey, can I build a high rise on that parcel right over there? Where can I put a Trader Joe's? Do we, how do we wanna enhance the look and feel of what we love on our main streets in Kelseyville? Um, are we making space for businesses near folks that will work there? So we don't want to have a commuter, you know, bedroom community. We really like to have communities all sort of workable together. So places where people can work within a safe traveling distance. Neighborhoods, we'd like walkable access to parks um, and open space. And then do we want all single family residences or do we want sort of a mixture of all different types of densities? It kind of, it, it depends on what the community vision is that dictates what we look like in the next 20 years. Ah, it could also affect how the roadways are designed and maintained as well as, well, I think I covered most of that stuff too. Oh, except for the last one, how our cultural and natural resources are conser conserved. All right. 
Lake County 2050 update is a project according to the definition of the state law. So it is subject to CEQA, which is environmental review. The purpose of the environmental review, which I already told you about the EIR, the purpose is to disclose and analyze any impacts that this project may have on the environment going forward. As well as when, when significant impacts are identified, it may have mitigation measures that can limit or lower the significant impacts on the community. Public review is strongly encouraged. And the two periods for public review were first the scoping meeting, which we had like a month or two ago. And the purpose of that was for people to give us input on what they think we really need to not forget to analyze different areas in our community that we may not have already been aware of. But there is also a 45 day um, public review period of the draft environmental impact report. And one other thing, during these different times of review, we're also gonna have meetings. So you don't have to go home and read what's going to be a very lengthy document, but we'll have lots of pictures um, by yourself. Feel free to scan the parts that you find interesting and then join us in a community workshop where we can talk about it. This is our overall timeline. It's a three-year process we began last fall. We have countywide elements in progress with drafts anticipated this fall. Each local area plan will have three community workshops. This first one is to gather input to identify the key issues that we're then gonna be working on for the next meeting, which is coming this fall, where we're gonna work on policy and land use issues. The third and final meeting of the, lake, of the local area plan community workshops will be to review and, and, and discuss the, the draft local area plan. We anticipate that will be uh, next spring, spring 2025. The EIR, or environmental analysis, really gets going once we have a draft of our local area plans because that's when we've got pretty much a rough draft of what the project actually includes. It's gonna take a good year to do, that to do that draft EIR. We anticipate that by the spring of 2026. Public review of the local area plans and countywide elements and the EIR in the spring of 2026 20 with anticipated or hoped for, really, really hoped for, adoption by the Planning Commission and Board of Supervisors by fall of 2026. Next slide, we're gonna talk about all the opportunities for community engagement. And there are a gob of them, because again, this is a community visioning plan, not Mireya's idea for the world. Opportunities to participate. Local area plan community workshop, just like now. Thank you so much for coming. If you know anybody who couldn't make it, they can still enter comments at our lakecounty202050.org website. Um, we've got the stakeholder focus group meetings. Now we don't have that arranged yet and we don't know what they're gonna look like yet. We're doing these first series of the local area plan workshops so that we can get a, a feel for what are the priority issues. And then we're gonna gather stakeholders that are directly connected and can advise on those issues to sort of dig down deep into those. We have a GPAC, General Plan Advisory Committee, team of 15, and uh, they have a number of meetings throughout the process. They are all public. They will also be an opportunity for you to come after you've read, you know, maybe five pages of the EIR that interests you. Great time to tune into that GPAC meeting and, and have your say. Uh, planning Commission meetings and Board of Supervisors meetings a little later. But one thing, uh, also, yeah, project website and surveys. We do have the survey that you may have seen uh, on your tables on the website as well. So we want to have every opportunity. We also have business cards on the table that have a QR code. Feel free to take one and share it with 50 of your closest friends so they can um, go on and take the, the survey just in their own time, at their own convenience. And then one thing that didn't make the slide because the board created it later are the LAPACs, the Local Area Plan Advisory Committees. The board established one LAPAC for each planning area, so we now have eight more advisory committees. Each LAPAC has, yeah, thank you. Tammy's playing Vanna right now. She's got applications for this awesome committee. 
But the, each committee will have nine positions available. One is rever reserved for tribal membership, one is for environmental representative, and then they sort of change a little bit depending on which, which group it is. So for Kelseyville, it is uh, one member of the Municipal Advisory Council, a business owner, an agricultural representative, and four at large. So anybody that lives within the planning area is welcome to apply. I will make sure we only have need meetings for the LAPAX as needed. Some of our local area plans may have entire consensus and they don't feel like any further discussion is required. However, we want to make sure that if further discussion is required, because in our local area plans is really important stuff, like where are the community growth boundaries going to go so, so that the county knows where our infrastructure is going to move in the next 20 years. What do, are we really sure about these design guidelines? I don't know. We might need a little more time. And so we will plan LAPAC meetings as needed to make sure that the details details get ironed out to the to the level that we all need as a community so that we can buy into these plans yes oh thank you we will collect applications through the month of May with anticipated appointments by the Board of Supervisors at maybe the first or second June meeting okay so I want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions because I know I went through it really quick. Um, but before that, let me just give you an overview of what's next. Small group discussions. So this is the main reason why you're having dinner late tonight. We will break into, well, we're kind of already broken into groups by table. And we'll have 45 minutes to go over the four questions that are there. Basically, the four questions are, what do you really love and want to see preserved in Kelseyville? What do you want to, and, and by that I mean the whole Kelseyville area plan. What would you like to see changed in the future? Then we're going to take a look at the land use designation map. And do you think that, do you, are you aware of any changes that you'd like to see in the future? So this could be additional commercial area, higher density housing. The, I think that project should go over there or something like that. Things like that that would, would necessitate a change in the way we currently have the land use designations. And then the last one is looking at the boundaries of the Kelseyville area plan, um, planning area, do you feel that those boundaries still reflect the community as it stands today? The facilitators will be scribbling madly to capture all of your ideas. Please feel free to share every one that you have. Uh, we want to hear everything. Don't think, oh, I shouldn't say that because, you know, everybody will laugh at me. Don't worry about that. We want your idea. Every idea is really important. Additionally, again, we will have planning staff wandering the room, including me. Uh, if somebody's got a planning question, let your facilitator know. They're going to wave us down. Then after that 45 minutes, a representative to speak for the table, which will be selected by the table, and it will not be staff, um, will stand up and report back to the larger group the highlights of what was discussed during your small group session. We want to respect your time. Um, so we'll keep these uh, summarizations or reports back to limited to one to two minutes. All right, go to Q&A. Does anybody have questions of what I just talked about? Rick. Oh, wait, we need a microphone. Well, if we, oh, because we don't have Zoom, and actually, also additionally, we are recording the meeting. So if we can get um, people on microphone, then the people watching it later won't go, what was he saying? I can't. How do certain state mandates come into play? You know, and, that, and then the most recent uh, was in our last election. We had the uh, uh, passage by a slim margin of the uh, uh, what was that the uh, the plan to help with the homeless problem that we have throughout the state. How does all that come into play with this planning process? So the state will not certify a general plan that is not consistent with state law. 
So we're keeping those laws that are existing in mind. Got to give you the disclaimer though, sometimes the state makes up stuff after we get everything all settled and we think we're good to go. Um, and so we just deal with those as they come up, just as we have done in the past with the, the new laws for accessory dwelling units, you know, reduce setbacks, uh, uh, flexibility, things like that. So we deal with those as they come up. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't like microphones. Um, my question is, our area plan um, extends into Lakeport, obviously. And I know this was done 20, 40 years ago, whatever it was. So I'm just curious why we can't stay within the 95451 area code when we have three, all these little small area plans, the Rivieras, Blue Lakes now. Everybody has these small groups that can say what they want. We have just like gotten thrown out into the water and I'm asking why that happened, I guess, because I think that's an, a, a serious issue. I feel like our voice might not be heard, those of us that live right in Kelsey Bell and have businesses. So that's my question. I think you make a very good point that should definitely be expressed when you get to question number four. Mm -hmm. Do the boundaries of our planning area reflect our community still today? Okay. Yeah, make sure that gets recorded. Anybody else? Because you guys know I can talk about this all day, so I'll, I'll get us moving. All right. So we will go ahead and break into our tables. Facilitators, grab your easels. You should have a number of markers. Also, if anybody is crowded and wants to move to this table, it is like all wide open. Elbow room aplenty. And the maps that are on the table, feel free to mark them up. We have just a few more minutes, so make sure that your uh, facilitator has taken down your ideas. I hope that the volume in the room was a good indicator of a robust discussion. Thanks for coming back to the big group. If you wouldn't mind, if you're facing that way, if you wouldn't mind turning your chair it helps with the aesthetics. It was Sam's recommendation, so for our recording. We are just going to now do some reporting out. And let's go, let's start with this table and go around in a circle. So we'll start over at Joy's table. Oh, we forgot to pick facilitators. Hopefully every table that I was not at picked a facilitator. And hey, Rachel, you wanna be a facilitator? Craig? Yes. Okay, good. There, done. Thank you. Here, can somebody hold it? <laughs> we have a lot of ideas. Go, Joy, go. Okay, so our assets. Uh, the view of the mountain, we want to keep uh, that. I'm right in front of the camera. Oh, that's kind of important. There you go. Excellent. Okay, so view of the mountain. Uh, downtown Main Street, small town feel, live music and events. Uh, an asset is diversity, the Kelseyville Business Association public trails, we want to preserve and enhance them, um, parks, Highland Springs Recreation Area, the county parks, state parks, access to the lake we want to keep, uh, the airport we want to keep, um, and small farms, ag, farmer's market we want to keep. Challenges. Uh, limited business and housing growth. Um, speeding and pedestrian safety on Main Street, something to slow things down. Um, lack of community pool, swimming lessons, safety, uh, local jobs, uh, schoolyard maintenance cleanup, uh, Kelseyville being a food desert, no grocery store, local area shopping, uh, no hotels for growing tourism. Uh, challenges with growth um, by community members. So when people kind of push back about wanting the community to grow. Uh, lack of medical professionals. Uh, lack of road access. The cost of the upgrades to the town. Cost of fire mitigation. Putting pg e power lines underground. Uh, walkable sidewalks and bike lanes. Event centers for large parties, bigger than us, like 200 people. 
um, homeless and help for the homeless, and illegal cannabis grows. Those are our challenges. All right, so changes to planned land use. We kind of lumped these two questions into one. Um, but we said downtown needs more commercial mixed use. So with businesses and then apartments above, uh, more high density, low income uh, for ag workers and non-ag workers. Um, we want to see the creek area have a little bit more commercial and mixed use and less industrial, maybe use uh, lamps and field or something spread out where we can have some more industrial areas um, outside of squished downtown. Um, and then, yeah, making more space downtown for local businesses and to also increase recreation. Uh, pool for the community, still want that. Um, and review areas for possible changes, uh, yeah, not being used for ag. So if there's defunct ag or if there's um, ag that isn't being used right now, maybe those are places that we could kind of expand the community. Um, and then EV charging stations, we could use some more of those. And, oh, and then the local area plan land use boundaries, we like them. They're big. I think I, we like the inclusion of Lamson Field, we like the inclusion of Highland Springs, and I think it covers the community that we're in. Ta-da. Yay! Very good, very good. All right, Rachel. Oh my God. Well, okay, so, huh? Oh, well, I guess I'll stand across from you then. Uh, so kind of in a similar vein, um, we love our main street businesses. We like that we don't have the big box stores right downtown. We love our community and the people, the small town feel, country feel, access to agriculture, um, our great local events, um, and our ability to have those events um, without having to get a lot of you know uh, approval. Uh, the natural beauty, uh, clean air, um, pretty good schools, um, great water quality and quantity, and a uh, draw for tourism. Okay. Okay, again, similar vein. There is a draw for tourism, but we have a lack of lodging for tourism. Um, more middle class housing, because we were talking about development of kind of lower class housing, but you know, we kind of need you know, kind of first time home buyer type um, categories. Mm -hmm. Adjustment to the floodplain so that we can improve development on some of that land. Um, ooh, I don't remember the comment about homeowners insurance. We need better homeowners insurance and more access to it. Yeah, yes, fire is preventing a lot of that. Okay, fixing our roads. Um, and creating more roads, um, improving um, access to the schools, um, eliminating that sort of commuter traffic jam in the morning when you're dropping your kids off. Um, better Wi-Fi for the community, internet access, sidewalks, um, so pedestrian safety. Um, access to munip municipal water, should your well dry up or if you're in the sort of the town limits. Grocery store options, again, the food desert sort of thing, um, and improving farmers markets. Um, we also would like to see a rec center. There's really no place for our kids to go. I, I say our kids, I don't really have them. But um, kids to go like in the, you know, when it's raining, um, a community pool, uh, continue to improve our schools and make sure that we have enough space for the continued growth and we're bringing in more housing, we're gonna have more families, we need more room in our schools. Teacher recruitment, child care, um, emergency centers that could also be, could double as rec centers, you know, sort of multi-use centers. Um, senior focused options, um, events, healthcare education, access to healthcare. Um, streamlining process for economic development. Um, incentives for 
new business, um, finish our highway improvements, um, bus options, sort of, um, you know, travel for um, medical travel, and improve our airport. Okay. Um, okay, so land, this was our land use changes. Um, get more high density housing closer to the schools. Um, and then spaces for service commercial, like out by the old granite property, um, perhaps on the north side of Gaddy. Uh, industrial development. Um, what, oh yeah, for like 5,000 to 20,000 foot square, or um, 20,000 square foot buildings. Um, increase land uses, like um, bringing industry into like sort of older areas like old you know packing ho houses that aren't being used the Grange property that's going to be essentially abandoned um, oh flexibility and reuse of pear sheds I'm like I can't read that um, identification of corridors and um, alternate uses of what what is this that's uh Ag zone land. Ag zone for, okay, so for alternate uses. Okay. And our boundaries. We also like them. Okay. Who's next? Excellent. Thank you. I'm very glad you could read my scribble. So uh, I think one of our assets is our remoteness, the natural beauty, and the lake. Um, everybody here good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the small farms, our food trees, the, the, the nut trees, the olive trees, pear trees. Of course, the clean air, the lack of light pollution, our small population, less traffic, uh, not as developed. Uh, public service fire stations are great. Uh, the locally owned stores. So all of our stores are, <laughs> are definitely local and that's a real asset to us. Um, it's inexpensive to live here. Uh, we got good entertainment. Hold the mic just a little closer. Good, Lorna. good entertainment. Plenty of community events going on. Uh, beautiful airfield. Uh, tribal influences within the county. Also, we've got Lake Family Resource Center with their domestic violence shelter. NCO helps, and uh, I, though we didn't put it down, the Gleaners is here as well, and they're a fabulous program. And the Kelseyville Senior Center. <laughs> We're now doing yoga twice a week. <laughs> um, the challenges. Ch challenges with diversity among the community. Uh, upgrade it. We need to upgrade the schools, uh, need more funding support, treatment centers, where we could use some treatment centers and some rehab centers here, um, especially mental health. I can't see what this says here. <laughs> Includes businesses. Who wrote that? <laughs> can't read it. Okay, um, there's no library. We need more art in our, in our community. Definitely grocery stores, a you know, large grocery store here. La Monarca is a real asset, but we could use something, uh, you know, a place that you can uh, afford the stables as well. Um, a big problem at 29 and Live Oak where the children are crossing, uh, that floods anytime it, there's a decent rain and the kids have to choose whether they're gonna walk out in the street or walk through the water. Um, there's no swimming pool. <laughs> Uh, there's not enough transportation and services for the seniors. Uh, we could use a little better medical care, maybe a hospital in the area. Uh, public transportation can use improvement. Organic gardening, a community garden of any type would be appreciated. And if we could get the creeks cleaned up and increase access to the creeks, it's an asset that we have that we're not taking advantage of.
<laughs> it's okay, we can keep going on. Okay. Uh, so are there any changes that we think needed, are needed to the plan? Um, again, a, a designated area for community garden to allow for food forests, uh, more activities for youth to support their dreams, All, uh, revamp some of the old buildings, uh, so say something, about, uh, something about light industry, more open spaces, uh, the county park, another county park would be nice and more trees in the Kelseyville County Park. And there was just um, a little concern about if there's a difference between the area planning, the area planning committee and the advisory committee, um, just kind of tighten those boundaries up so that they reflect one another. Okay. And uh, a more in-depth map, which includes the roads, so people, you know, at the edges know where they stand, which awesome. committee they're, uh, which area they're in. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, Helen, who's there for your table? Oh, you got it. Where would you have us? Maybe. Okay. So what we love about our area, like most of you, we really appreciate our friendly country town and the cohesiveness of our community, our strong business association. We, have, we love our dances and our events. Uh, our farmer's market is close. It's on our region, so it's in our area, so we get to brag about that. We appreciate that a lot. We, of course, love all of our wineries and the wonderful agricultural feel and agriculture in general, all that goes with agriculture. You know, we love seeing a tractor out in the middle of the highway every once in a while and pear trees that drop all those beautiful um, petals. It, it just brings such a wonderful feel to our community. Having an observatory here is a wonderful standout. The b general beauty, public spaces. We've got great parks. Too many is never a problem, but we sure appreciate the ones we have. We'd really like to hold on to our dark skies. Uh, Next. Yeah. Let me get this one out of your way. Let me over. Yeah. Well, I'm going to hand it to Terry. Or, yeah, make it go away. Things, of course, that need a little improvement would be our roads, uh, a little economic development. I think by that we are speaking of small businesses and or industry. Obviously, nobody wants an overabundance of that, but clearly we could use a little. Uh, our broadband improvement would be wonderful. Some workforce development. Again, back to our dark skies, there are some particular issues at our high school excuse me, I guess it's the elementary school that uh, could use a little attention, a more affordable housing, all those sort of givens. Traffic on Main Street, of course, could stand a lot of uh, attention. Improving airport uh, activity in that area, some perhaps industry. There's, there's a lot of open space there. It could probably be bit, uh, put to better use. We could use a stronger teacher pool we have great teachers. I'm, I, I don't not to take it away from the ones we have, but but we could sure use a few more uh, effective teachers. Homeowners insurance, of course, everybody knows is just wants to makes you want to shoot yourself. Uh, increased fire department and and sheriff. Of, uh, we clearly would benefit from that fire abatement. Share more lodging for tourists. Everybody knows we need a hotel or two. Um, and of course, if we have more hotels, we'll need more restaurants. I think we can. Um, so, basically, as we 
talked about it, we're kind of living the general plan. We didn't have anything to truly compare to, uh, but things that we thought would be nice, again, back to enhancing the airport, uh, you know, kind of improving and working on things that we've already got going on. Our, we'd like a big park, which I think was mentioned by most of you, uh, recreation, pickleball, we have the shared tennis courts, but that's not the same as a big area that a, the whole family is. Something for bocce ball, uh, pickleball, a pool would be wonderful, of course. The sort of, um, oh gosh, you know, those activities that they have where you walk down the road and you can do some push-ups here and some pull-ups there, that kind of thing, uh, you know, all in one place. And if it led to some trails that took you down to the creek or something like that, you know, just to think about our people downtown being able to walk out the door and, and go encounter this sort of thing would really be something. Um, so of course more hotels and restaurants. Hiking trails at Highland Springs, it'd be really nice if we had a map. It'd be really nice if those trailers were, uh, trails, excuse me, were user friendly for someone besides Kim and all her friends. <laughs> Gosh, you know, we'd all like to be out there, but if, you know, it's, they're just not well marked. And I'll tell you, I've been out there with Kim, and, and it's still challenging. They're, they're really, there's a lot of guesswork going on. Little strings tied to the trees is just not, you know, that's not hiking trails. Better trail signage, got it. Thank you. Uh, more <laughs> office space, a grocery store. Everybody wants a grocery store. We'd like to do away with the empty lots. You know, we've got them, and it'd be really nice, I think, and I kind of push every chance I get with the Kelseyville Business Association to put our own heads together and think about what we could do with those empty lots. What do we want in our town? And, and let's make it happen. We don't, you can't just wait for some of those things to ha you know, come to you. We need to figure out what we want and look for it. We'd like to do something about empty lots, uh, dilapidated housing, and so on and so forth, um, around downtown. Less speeders, we'd like to really, and I know we are all doing our best to uh, do something about those people flying through town and causing problems. Bike trails would be really nice, a few more bike trails. Uh, Main Street as a walking mall has been discussed. Get all of the traffic, you know, kind of see if we can't take it around the downtown area. Uh, I, um, traffic, yeah, so I think that that covers all of that. So the only changes we saw looking at our boundaries that we thought was kind of um, awkward is that the Canocti Vista Rancheria should perhaps be in one district or the other. And it, as near as any of us were able to tell, there's a kind of a line down the road and I think the casino maybe is on one side of the project and something else is on the other side. So if there was any adjustment there, I think that would be probably clear some things up. So I think look at zoning for housing and, and plan for expansion because it it's needs to happen. What's going to happen and, and we might as well kind of pick and choose. So I think that's everything. Thank you. Okay, um, a lot of similarities here. So what we like the most, the low density population agriculture, open space, natural beauty, uh, the small town Main Street, um, community spirit and support, the weather and the dark skies. Hey, Greg. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Look Sharon. this way. Oh, okay. You gotta read. All right. Okay, supported uses, uh, biking, walking trails along the creek. So, exploring the idea of maybe, you know, in the summer months for when people are visiting, you have walking trails through the creek that are day use only, therefore people can't camp out overnight and code enforcement can enforce that. Different approach. Um, enhancing the roads, uh, I don't think much needs to be said on that. <laughs> Roadway maintenance, pedestrian facilities on primary roads, um, enhance code enforcement. Uh, to environmental, okay, pres preservation. Okay, what we like the most, the ag land, ag use, right to farm and uh, some ag soils.
So apparently we had all the potheads at this table because under current challenges, <laughs> uh, we have cannabis grows, large scale commercial grows, odor, dispensaries on Main Street. It's basically all cannabis stuff. Not like abandoned grows, dilapidated hoop houses blown in the wind. Um, changes. Uh, oh, increased setbacks in certain areas. It's all cannabis related to keep cannabis compliant. Um, changes, homelessness, unhoused populations, cannabis ordinance update, required bond for cannabis sites for remediation, moratorium on cannabis permits. So. So changes that we would like to see to the planned land uses. So what we were kind of thinking was there's going to be a grocery store that's going to want to come to town with all this high density housing. And so how do we try to drive that in a way we like? Possibly with aesthetic requirements to downtown so you don't get some big cookie cutter dollar general in here. It's going to have to be some small town feel, something other than a big box store. But like, what are the tools where you could actually do that? Because you can't discriminate, but if it doesn't meet the aesthetic requirements. Uh, height requirements. So maybe these heavy residential go in with less height, maybe two stories instead of three, so we're not blocking the view of the mountain. Um, and then possibly, so the reason there's dispensaries on Main Street, we're not like a city with our own ordinance, therefore it was a commercial site, a dispensary qualifies, there's no extra permit required since we're unincorporated. Um, so maybe making part of that somewhere drawn in there. Okay. Boundary changes. So it is somewhat strange that there's Lakeport, Finley, and Kelseyville. It does make it a big area that is going to have a lot of different opinions. So maybe we want at least discuss the possibility of shrinking down somewhat and essentially having Finley and Kelseyville as the area. Um, Lakeport is its own area, its own city council, its own all sorts of things. So maybe keep them separate, open to discussion. Well done. It is super exciting when the input that we get from a community, from multiple people, from multiple areas of expertise and experience come together in groups and we have these strong themes that resonate from table to table. So what I'm hearing tonight is we love our views, we love our clean air, we love the country uh, culture of our community the water, we want to preserve what we've got in a number of areas, the, the, the awesome events that we have going on in Main Street, and a lot of the changes are similar as well. And as we think about ways for development, well, as, as staff is going to work between now and in the fall to do some drafts of land use and policy issues, things to really start chewing on at our next community workshop, having a consensus like this is super helpful with us. So thank you. You guys are amazing. This was great. This was some really, really good input. Not only did we get a lot of different ideas, but we got a lot of the same ideas from table to table. So this is awesome. Yeah, I'm totally geeking out on it. This is great. All right. So next steps, what I want to leave you with, because people always remember the last thing they hear ways to stay involved let's just uh, um i would strongly strongly recommend anyone who has interest in in seeing this through really getting to to talk about the community growth boundaries the fine details of the design guidelines please volunteer for the uh, local area plan advisory committee it, it's going to be fun i promise lots of fun Encourage people to check out the website, lakecounty2050.org. This, again, is the housing of all of aspects of our project. Our, our upcoming events will be there. These videos from all our meetings will be there. Uh, lot of the surveys. When you wake up tonight at, or in the morning at like 2 and they're like, oh, I totally forgot to say this, that, and the other, no problem. Go to lakecounty2050.org and click the thing that has the comment section and just type it right in there. You'll feel better. You'll sleep better. It'll be good. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Just looking forward, our next community workshop, uh, the second one will be sometime in the fall. 
If you haven't signed up for our notification list, but you really want to make sure you know what's going on, you can do that on which website? LakeCounty2050.org. It's right there. And we promise not to completely, you know, fire hose you with emails, um, but it would be a great way to make sure that you don't get out of the loop. That concludes our presentation. I want to extend another thank you to Sam Houston, to Gilbert Rangel, to our AmeriCorps personnel. Tammy does have the applications in the back. Good luck getting by her without her giving you one. And we do have one last announcement of a volunteer fair that's coming up, so I'll hand it over. Oh, no, wait, you can't talk on that. Yeah, that's there. <laughs> Hi, so in your area, at Kelseyville Presbyterian Church on April 30th will be a volunteer fair for volunteers to find places to volunteer and for people looking for volunteers to find volunteers. If you're interested in going, it's going to be on April 30th from 4 to 6. We hope to see you there. Um, you can grab a flyer on the way out if you would like, and any more information, you can ask Tammy in the back. And the biggest thank you is to everybody who came tonight. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And have a great evening.